Money Radio, discussing the business of making and spending money. Hello, good afternoon. Welcome to this special edition of Money Radio. My name is Kingsley Alu. Today we'll be looking at uh, the implementation of National Automotive Industry Development Plan, a five-year comprehensive program of the National Automotive Design and Development Council. With me today in the studio to discuss this is the Director General of the National Automotive Design and Development Council, Mr. Jelani Aliu, MFR. Sir, so you're welcome to the studio. Thank you. So, so let's 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 look at this uh, automotive uh, industry development plan. I know that uh, uh, not quite long ago, your agency unveiled the first made in Nigeria cars in Abuja here, and you did say that uh, hopefully maybe before the end of this year or anytime soon that uh, you gave better government to establish three automotive industrial parks to encourage the production of these vehicles locally. How far have you gone with that project? Yes, uh, uh, thank you very much. It's, uh, it's, it's great to be here. Uh, I think maybe a little bit of history when oh. you're referring to the NEIDP. Okay. Uh, why the NEIDP? Why the National Automotive Industry Development Plan? Uh, what were the factors that necessitated its uh, a strategy for it to be strategized and uh, to uh, begin to be implemented? If we go back in the uh, 70s and 80s, we all remember we had a Peugeot, a Volkswagen, a Namco, Stair. Uh, the automotive sector in Nigeria back then uh, was up and running, and things were happening. Uh, Nigeria was able to produce about 140,000 new cars per year. Uh, everyone was buying brand new vehicles, uh, 504s, Beetles, Igalas, and many others. Then for, for no reason uh, of the uh, automotive companies operating here, uh, the economy crashed, the Nigerian economy crashed because the, the country was so dependent at that time on crude oil and the price of crude oil fell from $27 down to below $10. Uh, the country overnight went to, into a recession. A lot of Nigerians, if not all, overnight became very, very, very poor. People couldn't buy those new cars anymore. So those companies were unable to continue to sell their products. Being business entities, they had to close down. So. Everything took a nosedive, not because the companies or the government said uh, stop producing vehicles. It was because the country went into a recession and people couldn't buy those vehicles anymore. But then the federal government said, we can't allow this to continue. We have to bring back automotive production. And uh, so the uh, momentum started and uh, the National Automotive Design and Development Council, uh, with the supervision of the Federal Ministry of Industry, Trade and Investment, uh, uh, our agency uh, strategized the NAIDP, uh, the National Automotive Industry Development Plan, in efforts to bring back automotive production. Just before then, uh, because of how bad things were, production had come down to almost zero. Everything had stopped. You know, Peugeot stopped, uh, so did Volkswagen and Namco Stair, uh, almost to a trickle. Uh, but because of the uh, implementation of the NIDP when it started, uh, uh, production bounced back uh, and is growing. And also because of, of that implementation, over half a trillion naira has been invested by credible companies across the country in the automotive sector. You know, companies like uh, Innocent, uh, Dangote Sino Trucks, uh, Lizarde, uh, Honda, Larry Shitu. Uh, and now uh, also uh, Meccano. Uh, so very credible companies that have uh, strong local and international connections and partnerships are producing vehicles in Nigeria. Uh, I think that quite the, the, the fact is when you say vehicles made in Nigeria, people expect a ramshackle vehicle that clearly looks like it was made maybe in, 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 a, in a dusty factory somewhere. But this is the new Nigeria, 
and the types of vehicles being produced and assembled in Nigeria are the same types of vehicles being produced anywhere in the world, whether it's Japan, U, uh, United States, or Germany. So a lot of the vehicles that we see that probably a lot of us even drive or own are actually produced or assembled in this country. A lot has happened. The NEIDP itself is made up of uh, five key elements, uh, investment promotion, uh, development of infrastructure, uh, development of standards, uh, manpower development, and uh, the market development itself. So NADDC is implementing these uh, key facets of the NAIDP, and a lot of progress has been achieved in each and every one of them. Uh, the first one I mentioned is investment promotion. If you're talking about an investment of over half a trillion naira, that's a lot. And, and, and most of this is by private committed individuals who believe in the uh, market potential in Nigeria, have invested money and are producing vehicles locally and employing hundreds, uh, uh, thousands of, of jobs. Uh, by our calculations, uh, direct uh, uh, and indirect jobs in the automotive sector in Nigeria are close to 50,000. Now that's big and growing. Uh, you mentioned the automotive industrial parks. Uh, these are centralized locations that we're working on. Uh, they are meant to be PPP. So it's not just a government that would be uh, implementing these uh, projects. Uh, we have uh, sites in Kaduna, uh, Ede, and uh, in Newi. So we're working very closely with international financiers and uh, local and international stakeholders because what we want is by the time we're done to have centralized locations with all the necessary infrastructure electricity water connectivity to apply uh, to, to enable the production of vehicles at any one of these uh, localities uh, so that is it uh, infrastructure development uh, skill manpower development we all know how terrible a situation is uh, with a lot of our youth graduating with no jobs uh, because the government has done all that it can. And in any successful economy, it is never uh, the sole responsibility of a government to employ all the citizens when they graduate. Uh, it has to be in collaboration, it has to be the, the private sector. So, but you have to really uh, empower those young Nigerians or those young youth of any nation with the necessary technical skills to make them marketable to make them, uh, to put them in a position to be able to add value uh, in their relative fields. And uh, in, in our own instance, it's automotive sector. That is why so far we've trained well over 20,000 Nigerian youth across the country in mechatronics and other automotive related fields. And uh, we've also moved on to build our own automotive training centers. We have one in each geopolitical zone. Uh, southeast, we have it in Abakaliki, uh, Southwest in Oshogbo, south south in benin north central in lokoja northeast in nabochi and northwest in zafara so these are locations where we hope very soon because uh, we've gotten approval from the federal executive council uh, to purchase and uh, uh, equip these centers with the most advanced and applicable teaching equipment and uh, modules so these are places where we hope to really uh, energize and empower tens of not hundreds of thousands of nigerians uh, to really understand uh, new types of technologies that go into vehicles, being an ability to understand them and uh, service them and maintain them, especially now that we're moving into a lot of technology embedded in vehicles, uh, electric vehicles, uh, a lot of computerization. And uh, as you know, uh, young Nigerians have that uh, affinity uh, to uh, anything electronic. Uh, so we believe uh, with these new types of vehicles, electric vehicles, or highly uh, vehicles with a lot of embedded technology, our Nigerian youth would be really very quick to grab it and, and run with it. And we hope that these centers would give them that opportunity to do that. Uh, so there's really quite a, a, lo a lot of development. Uh, you mentioned that we unveiled, actually it was uh, uh, last year, early last year, 2020, that we unveiled a, a large number of vehicles produced and assembled in Nigeria for the whole country and the world to see. And then early this year, uh, the first uh, electric vehicle ever to be assembled in the country was unveiled by uh, His Excellency Ni Adebayo, uh, showcasing or bringing in an era of advanced technology in vehicle production. So that Hyundai Kona uh, EV uh, set a new uh, standards in terms of automotive uh, assembly in the country. 
And then since then too, we have another uh, electric vehicle, the jet uh, systems mover that is, uh, is, has been deployed in Nigeria is under testing. Uh, so we will continue not just to promote local production of vehicles, we will continue to promote the production of advanced types of technologies in the automotive sector. And at the end of the day, it's all about uh, uh, enhancing the economy, enhancing the lives of people, giving people the ability to, to, to lead happy and successful lives by providing jobs uh, for them. Okay, sir. Is your automotive test centers up and running? They will be up and running very soon. Uh, we have them in uh, Zaria, uh, Lagos, and uh, Enugu. Now, the background to these projects are, uh, we all know what NAFDAQ does. Uh, NAFDAQ uh, goes after food and drugs to make sure that they meet minimum standards and that the Nigerian public is, 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 uh, uh, is protected. But when you look at uh, automotive spare parts or components, nobody really does that for now. And that is why when something goes wrong with your vehicle and you go to fix it at the mechanic and he puts in a new part or the so-called new part, uh, chances are it is either uh, fake or substandard. So you're back to the mechanic again and again, changing the same part. So there needs to be someone who regulates uh, parts and spare parts to make sure they are safe, efficient, and meet minimum standards. That is why we have built these test centers across the country. Uh, like I said, Zaria, Enugu, and Lagos. We are done with the construction. Now we're at the phase of the installation of equipment. We very much hope that towards the end of the year that we would have installed the equipment and then we would be able to test uh, any component of the spare parts. And if we find it uh, below standards, we will make it illegal to sell on the market. Okay, so what is the tariff structure for these uh, locally produced vehicles? The tariff structure? Yes, when you, uh, when you produce a vehicle, uh, you, it depends on the type of model and vehicle. Some vehicles, uh, you bring in the components. Uh, some of them, you bring in some components and you fabricate some components or structural part of the vehicle here. So we have what, what is called the CKD and SKD. Uh, SKD is semi knockdown. Uh, so some of the vehicle is assembled overseas and then completed here in Nigeria. That's SKD, semi knocked down. Then you have CKD completely knocked down where the whole vehicle is put together or assembled in Nigeria. It comes in, in, in these thousands of different components or some of those components or materials are sourced from Nigeria. So when you are bringing in uh, SKD uh, components, uh, you're charged about 10% duty, no tariff. And uh, when you are bringing in CKD components, it's 0% no tariff so that you're given that competitive advantage to be able to be uh, to, to run a financially viable uh, endeavor. Uh, the whole objective is to discourage the importation of vehicles built outside Nigeria and encourage production within Nigeria. Because we believe, and we believe it is a fact, that each time you bring in a fully built product, whether it's a vehicle, a television set, a radio, or whatever it is, when you bring it in already produced elsewhere, it means you have exported jobs and opportunities to that country of origin. But if that product or vehicle is assembled or produced in Nigeria, you're creating jobs, you are empowering our own people and driving our economy to be even more successful. All right, sir. So what incentives do you have for those investors and is to encourage them to stay? Yes. Well, uh, what I just mentioned is, is, is one of them. Uh, when they bring in their components and, and spare parts and materials, uh, it's cheaper to do that. They get the first competitive advantage. And we're also working towards a 10-year tax holiday. Okay. Uh, the vehicle, uh, the, the automotive sector is capital intensive and it takes quite a while before you recoup your investment. So we believe uh, a tax holiday of at least 10 years could enable them to do that. Uh, now, we also have Executive Order 3 and 5, which uh, promote uh, the, the patronage of local content and local products. Uh, these orders uh, would force uh, MDAs uh, to buy only made or assembled in Nigeria vehicles. Now, we're, very, we're working very hard to ensure that uh, this order is, 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 is further strengthened and uh, uh, so that these companies producing vehicles in Nigeria are patronized. 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 Patronized.
an ongoing uh, automotive software capacity building programs for engineers across the six geopolitics of the country. Yes. I'm curious to know, is this part of this NAIDP? Yes, uh, it's part of NAIDP because uh, a strong pillar of the NAIDP is the uh, manpower development and skills development. Okay. So, and then what are skills these days? Uh, today, skills are digital, they are computerized, uh, they are very creative. Uh, the, the, the aspect of developing a vehicle is very uh, digital now and computerized, using a lot of software, a lot of applications that make it faster, more cost effective to develop components and vehicles, mm -hmm. uh, test them, make sure they meet minimum standards. If there's anything found to be wrong, you can easily go back in the software and, and fine tune the structural integrity of those components. So we thought uh, in addition to uh, technical training, which we have been doing uh, to youth across the country, we have now moved into digital training. Uh, there are a lot of creative Nigerians out there who are very uh, innovative and imaginative that they can come up with components and vehicles. So by training them with this software, digital design software for engineering and design itself, we give them those tools to be able to come up with solutions and products and components that would go towards automotive production. Okay, so uh, uh, right now, at what stage are you now? We have done uh, three trainings. Uh, we've done it in, in Sokoto, we've done it in Weri, we've done it here in Abuja. We've uh, trained quite a number of youth and we're going to continue next into the south, uh, south, southwest and then the other uh, geogra ge ge geopolitical zones of, of, the, of the country. Mm -hmm. And what is interesting, those that have gone through the training in Sokoto and Oweri already, some of them have already set up practices, design uh, firms that are now uh, providing services in, in design uh, to, the, uh, to, 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 to their communities. So we're very happy that we've been able to empower these youth at a very high level uh, you know, leveraging on their creativity. Now with this new learned skill, they would be part of the automotive development phase uh, in, in the nation. Because it's not just about producing vehicles. It's not just about uh, uh, assembling vehicles. It's about Nigerians being part of that design and engineering development of the types of vehicles that will be produced and, and be used most effectively in the country. Okay, but is there any plan to maybe link them up with these established manufacturing companies already on ground to make sure that you don't just lose them after all the efforts and energy put into the training? Definitely, and that's the beauty of it. Mm -hmm. uh, the ones that have really excelled and are the best uh, will, will, will find it very easy to be absorbed by the industry. Okay. Uh, we ourselves, we have a number of projects we're working on and we will be taking on some of these young Nigerians to be part of our team. Uh, but the beauty of what we do and what we believe is it, when you empower an individual and you make them very professional, they become very marketable and, and, and they sell themselves. You don't even have to try to get jobs for them. They become so good. That is the whole uh, objective. You make them so good that these people who need the services are, are coming after them. Okay. We'll go on a short break now. When we come back, we'll continue with the discussion. Don't go away.
Money Radio, discussing the business of making and spending money. Them, we're doing them. Uh, like I mentioned, the uh, first uh, electric vehicle has, has been assembled in the country, the Hyundai Kona. Okay. We also have an electric van that is being tested in Nigeria. Uh, now, why electric vehicles? Uh, because uh, humanity uh, has, uh, you know, realized that we have to protect the environment. Mm-hmm. For so long, uh, a lot of vehicles and factories have been polluting the environment, oceans, atmosphere, lakes, mm-hmm. and uh, emitting a lot of dangerous gases. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, carbon dioxide, methane, and uh, uh, carbon monoxide. Mm-hmm. So in 2016, Nigeria was signatory to the Paris Accord. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is an agreement to mitigate the uh, release of harmful gases. And the best way to do that is with zero emission vehicles, electric vehicles that don't burn any fossil fuel and don't have any negative uh, or bad uh, particulars coming out of uh, the engines. Okay. So electric vehicles are key. Uh, to meet those targets, uh, we're committed to promotion, promoting vehicle electrification. And that is why uh, electric vehicles are real and they're already being produced in Nigeria. Okay, sir. Uh, 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 Debai Amodu he has a question for you. He says, sir, what are the benefits? Uh, Debai Amodu, thank you for joining us on the program. His question, sir, he says, what are the benefits of AFTA, the Africa, African Continental Free Trade Agreement to Nigeria's auto industry? Huge benefits, huge benefits. As you know already, uh, Innocent uh, has been exporting vehicles into all the African countries. Uh, Proforce also uh, has been exporting vehicles into other African countries. Okay. So the automotive sector in Nigeria is already uh, playing its role. Uh, we're already exporting products, vehicles to other African countries. We believe the AFCFTA is a platform uh, that would allow Nigerian automotive companies to really uh, uh, take advantage of the market opportunities across the continent. Okay. Uh, we have so much going for us uh, that uh, we, I believe, would be strong uh, uh, stakeholders in this African-wide uh, trade uh, era. Okay. So what we're seeing like this, uh, uh, let's uh, last December, see, uh, we're still on our Mr. Debe Amodu. He said last December, Vice President Emil Suwencho had put Nigeria's annual vehicle demand at 720,000 as against the combined output of local auto assemblies of 14,000. The implication is that the gap, even with the quantum of import, is still far beyond what the current capacity of the local assemblers can cover. The question is, what do you think should be done to close this gap? Yes, well, let's understand what the automotive sector is globally. Uh, there's no one country now as we speak, neither the United States, nor Germany, nor UK, nor Japan, that produces all the vehicles that they need. Every country produces vehicles they export and they import. Yeah. So we will never get to a stage where Nigeria produces 100% of vehicles it, uh, it uses. That, just, that scenario just doesn't exist in the automotive sector. It is not a reality. Uh, so we are not going to aim for that. Uh, and the figure of 14,000, like I mentioned earlier, we can produce upwards of 400,000 vehicles in Nigeria. Right now. Right now. It's not a matter of Nigeria can produce only 14,000. No, Nigeria can produce up to 400,000. What we need is support of the market to buy these vehicles. Mm-hmm. If, if Nigerians can buy 400,000 of these vehicles, by next week, these companies would be towards that target. So we are, we are working very closely with other government agencies and private sector stakeholders to unlock that demand so that these companies in Nigeria can produce that larger number. But uh, we should never uh, talk about that gap and say, okay, now you have to produce all the vehicles that you need locally. It just doesn't happen in the automotive sector. Okay. Uh, uh, the mayor Kenneth, thank you for joining us from Togo. Do you have any comment? Okay, I think we've lost him. Onu Koko Lawas 
is saying that Ajokuta still could do better. Do you agree in terms of you know harnessing the uh, materials there for auto production? Yes, yes. I think it'll 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 contribute enormously to the automotive sector, and uh, we really look forward to uh, its revitalization and its ability to really support what we are doing. Okay. Okay, sir. So let's continue. Let's look at the automotive development fund. Uh, at what stage are we now? Well, uh, it's a continuous uh, process. Uh, what we do as part of our mandate is to support uh, investors or companies that are looking at going into the automotive sector. Okay. So companies can uh, access uh, that uh, that fund uh, to set up uh, their, 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 their companies or to expand and scale up. So, and I'm happy to say that there are some very uh, successful companies that have benefited from that fund, and we hope to continue to use it to, to develop the automotive sector. Okay. So, uh, overall, can you just give us a little on this auto policy? You know, a lot of us at the moment don't know at what stage we are with, with the implementation and all the rest of them. At what stage are we now with auto policy? Well, the implementation has been going on for quite a while, and okay. that is why we have achieved these successes of uh, half a trillion Naira invested. Uh, that is why we have companies actively producing vehicles. Uh, just uh, not too long ago, we uh, took another trip around the country and uh, visited uh, many of these companies that are actively producing vehicles in, 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 in the country. And uh, anyone who gets a chance to do that will be amazed at the level of production in Nigeria. Uh, the, uh, the council was in Lagos, uh, we were in Inewi, we were in Kaduna, we hope to travel to some more places. We're also in Ota and Okun State. Uh, so like I mentioned, we have Larry Shitu, uh, we have uh, Lizard Agency, we have Innocent and Inewi, Omar Vehicles, uh, Tango Tessino Truck, uh, Honda, uh, Pan, uh, Meccano, uh, and many other companies producing and assembling vehicles in Nigeria. And this is a clear indication of the success of the NAIDP, the auto policy. Now, what we're working towards is we have the policy itself. What we're working towards is the legal framework that will make it impossible to overnight just change uh, the policy uh, because these companies need this policy to be competitive. And we have also other international global OEM uh, players waiting for the policy to become a backed by legal uh, framework to, to come into Nigeria. So these rules and regulations, the policy has been in effect uh, all these years, and that is why we see these results. The next step is to uh, make it, uh, to have a legal backing to it. Uh, but just before we do that, we're reviewing it, to make it even more effective. And we hope that as soon as we do that, and as soon as we get the necessary uh, approvals from our super, super, supervisory uh, uh, bodies, it will go back as an executive bill to the National Assembly. And we very much hope that as soon as it comes back very quickly, being an executive bill, uh, getting it approved uh, by the federal government and presidency wouldn't be, uh, uh, would be very quick, uh, which would further strengthen and, and consolidate uh, the successes that we've already uh, achieved. Okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, viewers, that's the much you can take on this program. Sir, thank you for coming to the studio. My pleasure. Join us same time next week for another interesting edition. Bye-bye.